I will be just discussing an initiative that Joe has um, eloquently described already, which is this vaccine acceptance intervention lab, and really going through what has been an ongoing partnership to look toward rapid development and testing of evidence-based vaccine communications. So moving to the next slide, um, the vaccine, um, as we all know, vaccine hesitancy is extremely complex. It's a getting at human behavior and strong digital campaign performance or strong online uh, interactions does not immediately induce behavior change offline. So we can appreciate that, um, you know, what we see online and what we see in communities uh, does not necessarily translate to uh, behavior change. And vaccine acceptance messaging is highly specialized to context and culture. And there's really an opportunity to do a lot of things right, but there is also an opportunity to get things wrong when we don't look towards the levers of change and really contextualize and localize the messages that we're bringing um, to light. These are two guides that have been nicely showcased, but um, the vaccine messaging guide is the one I'll be speaking more towards, which was also a collaborative effort, uh, which it goes hand in hand with the misinformation uh, field guide uh, that has been produced uh, in partnership with PGP, the Yale Institute for Global Health and UNICEF. So as I mentioned, vaccine acceptance is based on different levers which can be targeted for messaging. These levers or drivers of change are complex and um, best practice really understand that what is being said in the message is as important as how it's being said, whether it's being the tonal conveyance of what's being said and as well as who is saying it. Who are the messengers that are bringing that message forward? Are they credible? Are they um, acceptable? Uh, are they trustworthy? And so when we're looking at these different levers, we're really looking at thoughts and feelings, attitudes, cognitive biases, trust, social norms, um, and moral values. And what is our shared value system, which really can uh, be activated to um, convey effective messaging. Really the cornerstone of vaccine acceptance is trust in the information that you're hearing and the, and the you know, uh, system that is bringing you the vaccinations. So vaccine, vaccine acceptance occurs on a continuum, but what's really important to understand is there, with any behavior change, when there's ambivalence, there's a lot of room for making a change. And you'll, you'll understand that most people are reachable within this continuum. It's a very small percentage that are on the, the uh, red zone where people would refuse all vaccines. But there still is a great deal of ambivalence within this continuum from those seek, actively seeking vaccinations to some who would accept some, delay others, and refuse some. So we really have to work where people are at in terms of vaccine acceptance and understanding that this is a continuum. What COVID-19 has elevated is the emergence of an infodemic within a pandemic. So what quickly came to light with uh, COVID-19 was the addressing the parallel threat of both really trying to get out credible, credible information, influencing community public health practice within a pandemic um, situation when we have the parallel threat of misinformation and disinformation. And digital communication is one way that uh, shapes vaccine demand. And when we talk about digital communication, we are talking about what occurs on social media, but it's not just um, uh, on social media that's influencing demand, but it is also those community um, contexts which communications are um, percolating. So whether it's on radio, whether it's word of mouth, whether it's um, 
you know, uh, the way people would, um, whether it's community dialogues, people are accessing information in multiple forums. Uh, and modern and resilient health, health systems really need that infrastructure and tools to listen to, understand, and engage with their communities on social media so they can understand what are sort of the prevailing sentiments and how can that uh, sentiment be really addressed to have impactful um, interventions. As has been discussed in great detail, so I won't go through it, but communities can be inoculated against misinformation. And the epidemic it remains a global health threat as concerning perhaps as the COVID-19 epidemic itself. Um, and the vaccine misinformation guide, which I won't go into, but it really gives effective tools in how to really address the epidemic uh, and really critical um, steps to take in communities and, and in public health organizations of how to inoculate against misinformation. So really, um, given that uh, there's this wealth of expertise, both through UNICEF and through um, the academic sphere and through the public goods um, project, it quickly became apparent that there's an opportunity here to really leverage both the academic and behavioral um, science of vaccine demand with the practitioners, um, the UNICEF community, who is working on ground to raise demand for vaccines, to get vaccines into the arms of people who need them, and through Facebook, um, who has the potential to listen to, um, you know, ongoing sentiment, very strategic sentiment that can be leveraged to create impactful messaging. And what we learned in 2020 through pilot interventions, there's a real powerful opportunity to leverage the strength of each actor and really build out between um, the academic sphere, the country offices and UNICEF uh, headquarters and the private sector to really combine those approaches into something very powerful in order to leverage effective messaging um, into strategic communications coming from uh, countries to improve demand and address hesitancy in their community. And I think when a point that Joe brought up is really critical, and it's not just what we're hearing on social, but it's triangulating that data with what people are hearing on ground. What are the concerns of the constituency what are the CAP surveys telling us? What are the focus groups saying? What are the community dialogues saying? And really bringing that uh, intel into the um, into the into the sphere, as well as what we're hearing on the on the digital platform, and then building out um, impactful messaging uh, to address hesitancy. And really, what we understood is countries need support in managing expectations of the public uh, around vaccination and maintaining that public trust in vaccines amid COVID-19, knowing that COVID has not only um, presented challenges to health sector employees, and but it's also caused people concern about going to facilities for routine immunizations. And it's led to a dec decay in child immunization coverage. So there's multiple ways in which the epidemic or the pandemic has affected vaccination coverage and vaccination de demand and trust in vaccination has really um, uh, changed with the advent of the uh, pandemic. So working with the, with the partners mentioned, the goal of the, the partnership um, moving forward with the Yale Institute for Global Health, UNICEF, Facebook, and PGP is really to develop a nuanced understanding of the country information ecosystems, including how it's being altered by the COVID epidemic. Um, apply this understanding to develop compelling and effective pro-vaccine messages, campaigns, and inoculation messages if misinformation or disinformation are really pervasive um, components. 
systematically pre-test that messaging in target audiences for efficacy. And we're doing this currently in five countries. Um, I saw in the chat that someone was asking if we are considering working uh, with partners. The Philippines is actually one of the countries we're working with, as well as Kenya, um, Ukraine, uh, Pakistan, and India. And then building country sustainable capacity to really convert this intelligence into impactful messages so that strategic communications uh, can be you know, addressed moving forward using this uh, approach. And so what is the approach? So it's really taking insights from the social media plot, uh, space to generate rich insights on public confidence in vaccines and identify potential levers for effective messaging. So what is we going to get at uh, effective messaging? Is it an information gap? Is it a, um, uh, is it a values-based messaging that's going to resonate with the community? How are people making decisions around vaccination? Who are they listening to? And what are they learning online? We triangulate those insights with intelligence from the country offices, from the local um, listening tools, whether it's on their own social listening or through radio uh, or community forums, and then working with PGP to also uh, create targeted content that can be distributed through Facebook and then test and scale messages that will ultimately improve public trust in vaccines. And we can also measure change in intent to vaccinate um, among its individuals, as well as look towards regional coverage data to see if there is any impact of these large scale messages uh, into the vaccine uh, coverage indicators. So this um, is repetitive with what Joe shared already, but we're really working in the, the vaccine acceptance intervention lab from insights to impact and really working to build effective messaging uh, through by leveraging, leveraging social listening. Sorry, I've jumped ahead here. Um, and really develop package, tailor, and test content for different engagement strategies. So really looking at what is the issue, and this has to be a country-driven approach. So looking at what is the issue that the country considers a pressing need in terms of vaccine acceptance in the vaccine uh, space, develop content that's grounded in behavioral science, um, whether it's a you know pre-bunk or debunking a misinformation campaign, or just really addressing information gaps or vaccine hesitancy amongst the population. Uh, rapid testing, um, testing multiple messages, multiple um, uh, ad sets against each other to see what is really the most potent resonating messages, and then implementing and deploying those um, in country so that they can uh, have, have an impact. And so this, for anyone who is curious of how a brand lift study, they call it a brand lift study. And so where you see uh, ads, these are really the strategic messages or communications that we're talking about. So whereas in Facebook, they would deliver ads for products, uh, we are really looking to mobilize the platform for um, uh, uh, health communications. So those ads would be replaced with content from UNICEF that's really going to address vaccine hesitancy and vaccine acceptance um, in the country. And then polls or surveys would be delivered to understand the impact of those ads. And then we analyze whether uh, they have uh, had lift in the community or been recalled and are really shifting those gears toward uh, intention to vaccinate. So there's um, considerable work from uh, Dr. Omar's group who has really honed in on 10 evidence-based strategies that will work to develop an effective messaging. Um, and I think these are distilled really beautifully in the vaccine uh, messaging guide that was shared. And I can ask Angus to sh share the, uh, the link for that one as well. But I think that they're really helpful because it really shows both uh, the good practice that can be applied for vaccine hesitancy and acceptance, 
but also the missteps that our field has taken possibly in the past. Um, and when I say our field, I mean public health practitioners in uh, conveying messages and the um, inadvertent uh, uh, harm that sometimes occurs when we try to get our message out there. And it's really distilled in these 10 uh, evidence-based strategies to develop uh, strong messaging content that's going to resonate with target audience and considerations when you're building out communications. The first one is really don't assume vaccine hesitancy. As I mentioned, there are, this is a continuum. Uh, people are usually um, have some level of interest in vaccinating. Uh, so you can really amplify that with uh, your community. Anticipate the cognitive shortcuts. As the first speaker uh, discussed, people will quickly uh, go towards um, biases that, you know, with those quick thoughts uh, that he mentioned, will be um, drawn towards those cognitive shortcuts, uh, correlation, equaling causation, um, omission by I said, I haven't heard about this, then it can't be true. So really anticipate those shortcuts um, because that is, you know, the way our brain is wired. Storytelling is more impactful than statistics, um, especially when we're talking about the emotional work of getting children vaccinated or getting yourself vaccinated. These are decisions that are um, not only uh, public health oriented, but they're emotional decisions and um, they are driven by thoughts, feelings, and our values. Build trust by using credible communicators. We know that we are more likely to understand um, uh, messages that come from people who we deem as credible, that we deem as trustworthy, and that we deem as similar to us. So those are really important takeaways. Uh, we can connect with people's values, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And we remind people why we vaccinate. Vaccinations are a product of their own success. Um, the lack of disease that we see in our communities is hard to understand because it, we don't necessarily see the consequence of the lack of vaccination. Um, reinforce social norms. The fact that our friends and families are getting vaccinated, um, people we care about want us to get vaccinated, want to uh, be protected um, is important. And then busting myths, as we talked about, can backfire. So being really cautious about that. And finally, uh, back, communicating vac vaccination as an aspiration, not an act. So really uh, meeting people where they're at in terms of that continuum of hesitancy and really conveying vaccination as an aspiration and not a top-down uh, demand or remit. Um, and then I won't spend time um, talking about vaccine deniers, but it's really engaging the audience around the vaccine deniers rather than the, the deniers themselves. So these are just a couple quick examples of some of the communications that were piloted um, in the UNICEF uh, country offices based on the intelligence from Insights for Impact, which is uh, the Facebook arm, which is uh, conducting the analytics on social and with the messages and approaches that were um, encouraged by the Yale Institute for Global Health. Um, so this is really just showing the importance of choosing communicators who have the expertise, trustworthiness uh, and similarity and how these different messengers uh, were um, conveyed or um, taken up in each uh, ad you know, set would really help UNICEF and the country understand who is the appropriate messenger for getting, that, um, getting messages out. Again, connecting with people's values. Um, these can be broken up into eight, um, sorry, uh, 10 different, uh, well, really six dichotomies. Um, and really, um, we understand, for instance, that uh, liberty is a strong value that some individuals feel is at threat when people are um, uh, being told to vaccinate. Uh, so that's something that can be uh, leveraged 
if vaccination can be seen as actually improving liberty. Um, and the same with purity and degradation, um, you know, keeping children pure of disease. This is another value that resonates um, with, with people. So in Romania, uh, our message was tested, which um, because based on the social listening, there was concern among um, families who were choosing to vaccinate their children that they were being, um, you know, uh, you know, their right to choose what is best for the children was being infringed upon by being told to vaccinate. So it's really flipping that uh, that message to something that's more. Uh, resident saying the right to protect your you have a right to protect a child from um from ill health disease uh, not from vaccines so really flipping the narrative but really uh targeting the liberty value so that it resonates with people who are making the decisions for their children around vaccines and then again reminding people why we vaccinate and this is just a handful of um messages that have been created. Um, you really want to promote self-efficacy when you're reminding people why we vaccinate, that this is something that people can achieve. It's a doable, real action, and also that it's going to work. So people need to be not only assured that they can do something about vaccination, but that when they do, it's going to be something that works and protects their children. So where we are now, um, basically, uh, we are now building the evidence base. Can, as much as I'm interested in, um, as Angus mentioned, the private sector uh, doing good and sharing their expertise and knowledge uh, to build better health, build stronger health systems, and really um, uh, cascading some of their intelligence and their knowledge into the public health uh, sector, we also want to know if it works. Is it impactful? Do these partnerships really leverage the best of the actors to get um, resident campaigns and really make an on the ground, real life impact in vaccination intent and coverage? <coughs> so this is what we're working on now. We are working on a robust action, um, uh, uh, trial of this collaboration where we've selected um, countries and they've been invited to participate and they've agreed to um, take part in this journey with us. Uh, the UNICEF country offices, as I mentioned, in Philippines, India, Pakistan, Ukraine, and Kenya. And then we are in tandem with the country drilling down on the information ecosystem that they have compiled what are their pressing needs, pressing priorities in terms of vaccination? And then now uh, literally in the process of strategic campaign planning, testing and learning. And then uh, we will launch test campaigns in each of these countries to try to understand what works best and what is really driving demand and uh, reducing hesitancy in um, communities for uh, mostly COVID-19 vaccinations, but also routine immunizations in the Philippines. And then really, once we do these structured, um, once we understand the, the impact of those test campaigns, we will roll out a randomized structured test of the most promising messages and see whether those have an influence on generating intent to vaccinate, as well as, um, demand for vaccination services through coverage indicators. And finally, disseminating this work um, with the help of colleagues and um, the country offices, not only to make it accessible in peer review literature, literature but also accessible as um, a guide or a toolkit that can be used um, for other um, communication, um, health communication initiatives. The anticipated impact that we hope to achieve is that this is innovative research. The COVID epidemic, I think, has um, reminded us of the importance of crossing the aisle and working with partners that might not normally have worked together in the past to really bring out the best in the 
different sectors, inform country level vaccination campaigns to improve lives, really uh, making these messages and these campaigns evidence based, um, context driven, and, and you know, um, real time relevant to the pressing priorities that are happening right now. And like I mentioned, new partnerships that really uh, defy previous um, uh, partnership models and can generate collaborations that uh, have hopefully have an impact um, uh, beyond the individual actors themselves. And that is all for me. Um, thank you so much and happy to take questions. Thank you, Sarah. I think uh, there's kind of two levels of testing that you're talking about, the, the, the gold standard, which is really exciting to see that um, these messages that have been developed are going to be put into randomized studies and, and with real, real world outcome, you know, with proper outcome measures. Um, but we've got a few questions around, um, you know, how do you respond rapidly, <laughs> you know, almost in real time to what, um, to what we're detecting as well. <clears throat> which I guess relates to the first level of testing, which is um, an approach that I think every, every <clears throat> um, retail company, at least in the world, does every day of the year, you know, testing um, in, in rapid AB, uh, rapid AB approach. So, you know, iterative testing of, of everything that they ever post <laughs> anywhere on any of their channels. Um, could you speak a little bit to, to that, part of the testing, that first step, because it's not just, I mean, we, we saw the brand lift approach, but as I understand, it's not just doing a one-off test. There's the opportunity to iteratively test um, small modifications to the content um, that, you're, that you're putting out there before, of course, you go to that next, you know, big step. Exactly. Um, so what I think the, um, the platform has the, the possibility to do is, is just tweak minor aspects of the message to see uh, what traction it's getting and follow its uh, journey <coughs> the, uh, um, so that they, uh, you know, because there's such a large um, community that can be quickly access, accessed, uh, there's, you know, you can make very rapid A-B testing modifications. You can trade out messages, you can trade out messengers, you can trade out creative, um, you can trade out um, uh, different levers. Like we talked about uh, whether you work on testimonials versus uh, values-based messaging um, versus um, uh, aspirational uh, content versus authoritative content. So it really allows you to quickly test multiple different ways of saying the same or similar, I won't say saying the same thing, but uh, ad sets that have the same goal in mind. And so that is how these, the, the platform works and these, um, these messages can actually go head to head against each other. So you can actually learn which is really having the most impact. Um, in the in, in the um, in the social media um, uh, audience, that is to say, that is not everyone. And as we discussed, that is definitely not um, representative of everyone who is on um, who is accessing information in these countries. However, we have learned that some people, many people, do turn to um, the social media platform for information. It is a, you know, especially through the UNICEF country office site. So it is a, it is being used as a tool for information for people who are trying to get access to vaccines, for people trying to understand if they're eligible for vaccines. So it does have a, a, a powerful potential um, in that way. But that's exactly what is possible in the, uh, on the platform. And I guess the other, the other, um possibility is so so as we know if there's one thing that the the science tells us it's that one message for one person isn't necessarily going to work <laughs> for the next person um but perhaps you know um going through this process and coming up with effective messages 
um, may work for communities, whether they're whether they're you know real world or online communities. In the kind of um, preliminary work, uh, have you seen um, that it's possible to uh, identify or to target the messaging to meaningful communities or meaningful segments within the within the broader audience from a public health perspective obviously it's easy to do you know it's easier to do when you're selling you know running shoes or, or, or soft drink um, but are we getting any signals that this could also be effective from a from a public health perspective I think um, what's really interesting is that's something that is on the horizon and it's that really uh, detailed segmentation of the audience and what I think is also possible is there's two ways to run um, the 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 messaging one is you know to a mass audience but then you could also um, you know have the so either the the audience the message finds the audience um, or the you know the audience finds the message so you can either blanket the audience with um, messaging or you can follow um, what messages are getting most traction with you know um, you know if, if you wanted to do a segmented approach that's another way to do it it I'm probably not explaining it the best way possible for the platform but um, there's really two ways message can find you or you um, or you can find the message uh, so in that way you know it would be interesting to see whether certain messages are taken up by certain uh, people on the hesitancy spectrum um, but it, that is, I think, right now beyond what's possible. But I think the segmentation, whether uh, um, messages are finding their way into eligible populations for vaccines um, in terms of age or gender, those things might be uh, visible through the test. Thank you.